Let's look at ver uh, chapter number one, verse number 26. On the creation, of course, all of chapter one goes through all the creation that God made in the beginning. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And in verse 26, it says, let us make man in our image. So there's a plurality being used there. There's a plural pronouns being used when God is speaking, let us make man in our image. Now, the only thing that people might try to use to say, oh, this isn't referring to God in the plural would be, well, what about the angels? Right? Well, this is, this is God and the talking to the angels saying, hey, let us make man. Okay, if us is making man, who's actually doing the creating? Here? Is, are the angels ever ascribed any credit whatsoever for creation of any kind at all? Do we ever see that anywhere in, in Scripture? No. If we could turn to a passage, I could show you that, but we can't because the, the angels never were given power, authority to create. They are not creators. They are part of God's creation. So the angels aren't oh, hey, let us create, you know, part of creating man. We don't see that anywhere. Second, we see only God creating man in his own image. Okay? We're not made in the image of angels. We're made in the image of God. Man is made in the image of God, by the way. And we're going to go over that a little bit more tonight. Woman is not made in the image of God. Man is. Okay, and nowhere in the Bible does it say angels are made in the image of God. Nor does it say that the angels have the image of God. So if the Bible is saying, let us make man in our image, you, you have nowhere to say that the, the angels are made in the image of God or any other created being for that matter. You have zero foundation to make a doctrine that's saying something other than this is God stating, let us make man in our own image. And further, when you go through creation and when you go through the scripture, you'll see that God is attributed with creation. Jesus Christ is attributed with creation. You see the Holy Spirit involved with creation. You can see all three persons of God involved in creation, which makes perfect sense when the Bible says, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion, and on and on. So God created man in his own image. So you say, well, Pastor Burns, what are you talking about? How can you have let us make man in our image and God create man in his own image? You got a plural and a singular because that is part of God's nature. Because there, while, uh, while there's a plurality to God, there's also a singleness to God. And look at 1 John chapter 5 where we started. You can flip back there. Because this is, this is a really, really fundamental passage. And there's no... Of course, there is... Uh, it's evident why this passage is so much under attack in all the modern perversions of the Bible. Because this passage is probably one of the most clear passages on the, the attribute of God that, that God is triune. Now, it's all throughout Scripture, and we're going to find that, but this is just extremely clear cut, as is John chapter 1, as is a few other places, and we're going to turn to those places as well that are all clear cut. It's not just one, but if I'm going to try to explain the Trinity to anybody... The, the, the concept that God is three in one, I always turn to 1 John chapter 5. I always turn to 1 John chapter 5. It just, it's just the most clear passage. And this is the passage that the modern verses, they want to combine the two into one. They want to mix it up and change it and not have as powerful of a passage. Why? Because this is an extremely important doctrine that needs to be understood. Look at verse number 6. The Bible reads, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven. 
the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. So verse number seven there says that there's three that bear record in heaven. And this is preceded by the verse that's talking about bearing witness. Now, when you read the Bible, there is an importance to bearing witness, right? And establishing truth. And throughout God's law, when you have two or three witnesses, the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established, even going into the, to the, you know, the church the environment and just establishing facts and understanding what's true and what's not true. You need to have witnesses. And bearing truth, it says, you know, it's referring, it's talk, it starts off talking about Jesus Christ in verse number six. And being born of God, you know, prior to that, who, you know, who is he to overcome with the world? But he that believe that Jesus is the son of God, the importance of Jesus Christ, just being the son of God, the focus on Jesus Christ. Is there not a focus on Jesus Christ in the New Testament? Of course there is. He's the savior of the world, right? There's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our savior. So obviously there's a focus on Jesus Christ, but then he goes further to explain Hey, who is he to overcome with the world? But he that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And then explains a little bit, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Water and blood. Flesh, right? He came physically into this world. He was born into this world. Not by water only, but by water and blood. It wasn't just his spiritual body being born physically, being born of water. It was water and blood. He was a man. He was fully human. It's water and blood. He came into this world. And then it says, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So right off the bat, we have the Holy Spirit bearing witness of the birth of Jesus Christ, saying, well, the Spirit is truth, and there is a witness. And then to further bolster the witness of the Spirit, the Bible says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three record bearers. There are three witnesses. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One. 